a low Googleization nation. Welcome to Better Leaders, Better Workplaces, a GGG Unleashed podcast with thought leader Vivian Blaine. I'm Ira Wolf. And I'm Jason Cochran. In each of Vivian's episodes, we'll cover the latest trends and emerging practices around creating resilient workplaces. Let's begin. The pandemic is over. People need to just toughen up and get back to work. Be thankful they have a job. Though people don't always say it out loud, this sentiment is more common than it should be. In this episode, we're going to dig into why that matters. Hello and welcome back to GGG Unleashed, Better Leaders, Better Workplaces. I'm Vivian Blade, President and CEO of Experts in Growth Leadership Consulting and a recognized leadership and resilience thought leader. On this podcast, you'll get the latest insights and proven strategies to help you solve those pressing turnover, burnout, and workplace culture challenges your company is struggling with right now. So if you're a business or HR leader, you don't want to miss an episode. Employee mental health reached a tipping point during the pandemic. Though unfortunate, it did help to elevate our awareness of the importance of employee mental health. And while that is improving since the pandemic, we still have such a long way to go. In fact, leaders, this must be an ongoing area of concern and focus for you. I was intrigued by the findings from Mindshare Partners 2023 Mental Health at Work study. Their number one headline from the study, mental health is improving and worsening at the same time. I know it sounds confusing, but here's how that works. While the prevalence of mental health symptoms declined by 20% in the last two years, the duration of those symptoms increased and workers' views of overall mental health declined. Now, why should you care? Poor mental health can lead to lower productivity, to higher turnover rates. And Gallup reports that when employees' well-being suffers, they take more sick days, deliver lower performance, and have higher rates of burnout and turnover. I'm excited to introduce you to today's guest, Michael Davis, a principal with Mindshare Partners, which is a national nonprofit organization that is changing the culture of workplace mental health so that both employees and organizations can thrive. Michael is going to help us unpack these trends and point us toward the most impactful solutions. Michael, welcome. Thanks so much, Vivian. Happy to be here. Great. Thank you so much for being with us today. Can't wait to hear from you. Now, as we kick off our time together, I want you to tell us a little bit about yourself, about your role with Mindshare Partners, and then maybe a brief introduction to the organization. Sure, of course. So I'm a principal with Mindshare Partners. We are a nonprofit organization, as you said, whose mission is focused on changing our culture of workplace mental health. Uh, And we really do this so that both employees and organizations can thrive. I've been with Mindshare for about two years. My background is as an educator, a social worker, and uh, and a nonprofit executive. So I really bring a a variety of perspectives. I used to joke that as an educator, my job was to create learning environments at classrooms where kids could thrive. And this work is really about creating adult learning environments, adult work environments where adults can thrive. Awesome. Awesome. So important in this time for us to be mindful as organizations and the work that you do is so important around this topic. So I'm excited to dig in a little bit more. So can you talk a little bit about the state of employee mental health and why that should matter to the audience of business and HR leaders listening to us today? Sure. Well, as you mentioned, we just released our third iteration of our workplace mental health report. And one of the findings is the seemingly contradictory mental health is getting better and at the same time getting worse. And part of that is remembering that mental health is this wide spectrum of experiences. We often think about it in this bifurcated fashion of either I have mental health and I'm doing well or I'm struggling. And where we really encourage folks to reorient is that mental health is a spectrum. We sit on that spectrum. It goes from non-functional to thriving, and we ebb and flow across that over time. 
And so what we've seen, uh, you know, the pandemic brought across this, this crisis moment where I think if there is any silver lining, our awareness around mental health and conversation around mental health elevated. At the same time as we've gotten out of the pandemic, there is sometimes this mindset of we need to return to quote unquote normal, out recognizing the disruption that the pandemic created and folks taking a look at their own lives and, and what they want and continuing to see increases in stress, uh, decreases in psychological safety. You know, in 2019, when we first conducted the study, we found that 78% of people rated their mental health at least a seven out of 10. And that has declined in every year we've done it to this past year, we saw only 61% of folks rate that their mental health was between a seven and a 10. And if we reflect on our own experiences, that's probably not that surprising, right? We have so much going on in the world from a political, a social and economic lens that it, uh, I think many of us are feeling this sense of continuing to, to languish or the sense of kind of meh. And you asked why should leaders care about it? You know, there's both the human side that we should honor the, the dignity of people. There's also just costs to it, right? There are costs in terms of uh, retention or lack thereof. There's costs in terms of stress or lack of productivity. There's costs to our creativity, our sense of innovation. And the costs aren't minimal. You know, stress in and of itself costs around $300 billion a year. And we have 12 billion, that's with a B, working days lost to depression and anxiety um, around the world every year. And so there's a real cost to employers who don't pay attention to this and a real upside for those who decide to prioritize it and really focus on it. Wow. So this whole notion of, you know, that comment that I made at the beginning, the pandemic is over, people should just move on. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of truth to the fact that that is, is a um, very short sighted view of where we are today. And thank you for illuminating that. I cannot believe that you said 12 billion working days lost per year globally, yeah. based on on uh, the factors related to mental health and well-being. That is just amazing. So there are definitely economic costs. There are definitely, you know, to, to your point, this human dignity that we need to, to be mindful of, this interrelationship care for the individuals and for people to be able to, to feel that. I appreciate your point, too, about just how dynamic things are right now. We're in this never normal. And in Geek Skeezers and Googleization land, we talk about this never normal a lot. And we're not going back to the, to the way it used to be. So we've got to sort of get used to being in a, a, an environment of more uncertainty as we go forward and know that mental health is going to be affected by that. Absolutely. Yeah. So... There were some bright spots in your, your study, in your mental health at work study, and I really appreciated understanding that some of the employer investments in the experience of work are having a net positive impact on mental health. Can you tell us what some of those most significant factors are that are contributing to employee well-being? And then are there one or two solutions that you can share with us today that seem to have a greater impact on that? Sure, of course. So uh, in my share partners, we have the, the pleasure of getting to work with partner alongside a number of companies who are investing in mental health and really want to do something to be able to support their people. And I would say the, the companies that are doing this most effectively, seeing it as not just mitigating costs, but also opportunities to become an employer of choice, because more and more employees expect and demand that their companies do something about it. And so I, I wanna to point to two shifts that I think companies who are doing it well make. One is shifting from placing the onus on the individual to the collective. So, so often what we've seen is that companies are approaching mental health from a very narrow benefits lens, right? And are actually saying, well, you as an individual, we're gonna provide you some benefits, go care for yourself. But what they're not saying or neglecting is, and then come back to this work environment where we expect X, Y, Z of you, maybe it's negatively impacting your mental health. And so companies that are making the shift to recognize, actually, we as a company have a responsibility to this, not just because 
healthcare is one of our biggest costs, but because it actually benefits our people, if we're gonna say our people are our priority, let's invest in that and demonstrate that. And so they are making this shift to say, we as an organization are gonna take a look at how, yes, we want you to care for yourself as an individual, but we need the teams and the entire organizational culture to support mental health. And the other shift I think uh, we're seeing is this shift towards approaching mental health, not just as a benefit strategy, but as a culture strategy. And so there are a lot of great apps and resources that can support folks and, and benefits are really critical. Having access to high quality benefits is critical. And at the same time, if folks aren't aware of those benefits or more, if there's stigma that exists around mental health, people won't use them. And even if stigma is reduced, if the culture of work of the organization is negatively impacting people, uh, companies aren't doing everything they can to maximize a, a culture of sustainable productivity. And so what we really work with companies around is how do you approach mental health from a lens of, of strategy and approaching a strategy around your culture? Just like reducing costs, launching a new product, mental health can be approached from a strategic lens that really changes the culture, the way things are done around an organization. And, and that's what we're seeing the most effective companies do and how they're approaching it. You know, that's, that is excellent. And I think that really is a mindset shift to thinking about it less, as you mentioned, as a benefits approach to mental health and an individual problem or issue that we need to help people solve to more of an organizational culture and a an important strategic imperative that leaders have got to get focus around. Exactly. And that's the work that you all do with Mindshare Partners and helping organizations to elevate that to a, a strategic level. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Well, you know, as we close, can you share with us two or three parting thoughts, strategies, or tips that might be helpful for these business and HR leaders as they're working to improve employee mental health in their organizations? What can they do right now? Yeah, absolutely. So in addition to the finding you mentioned around mental health increasing and decreasing, uh, one of the key findings we had in our most recent 2023 report is that what people want, um, we asked a question about what, what would support you most? And people actually said not benefits, not therapy, but what they're looking for most is a culture of safety and support and a culture of work that is supportive of mental health. And so in, in order to really bring about that culture, we encourage a few things. One is really getting to the root of the problem, actually measuring, taking a look at what are people saying? What is people's actual experience at your company? And getting some numbers and some data around that that you can look to improve over time. Secondly, I would say upskilling your workforce. We really do believe that from leaders to managers to all employees, everyone contributes to culture and everyone can build skills that allows them to care for themselves, that allows them to navigate conversations or care for others that could be related to mental health and to contribute to an organizational culture of mental health. And thirdly, I'd say really implementing a strategy as we've been talking about approaching mental health from a strategic lens as a strategic imperative, as you said, is, is really critical in setting up, uh, you know, just like you would any strategy, investing resources, setting up capacity, actually having measurement, governance, strategies, tactics that you try, um, and involving everyone in it. This doesn't have to just be, you know, leaders are critical, and leaders being able to share their stories and vulnerability is critical. And you can take both top down and bottoms up strategies that are really effective um, around mental health. Excellent. Three key points, uh, these key points that you can take away from, from Michael today that you can begin to put in place right now immediately. Michael, thank you so much for the wealth, wealth of information. We can certainly go on in this conversation. Are there any resources that you'd like to share? And then if you can also tell people, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? Of course. Yeah, love talking about this and, and happy to do so more. So we are a nonprofit organization. Our, our focus really is on impact around this. And as part of that, we try to give away a number of, of resources. So if you go to mindsharepartners.org, you can find a lot of what we've written, free toolkits, free resources. You can also reach out to talk to us. We really want to be equipping folks, everyone from employees in general to folks who are leading employee resource groups activities to managers and leaders around mental health. So check it out and hopefully you'll find something there that's useful. 
Great. I am sure that there will be plenty there that's useful. All right. And the best way for people to get in touch with you? Yeah, I'm available on LinkedIn and also feel free to reach out mdavis at mindsharepartners.org. Excellent. We'll also have Michael's contact information in the show notes for you and a link to the resources that Michael mentioned and to their 2023 mental health at work report that we've been talking about today. All of that will be in the show notes for you. I also asked Michael to join me for a fireside chat so that we can go deeper on this topic. So be sure to join us on Tuesday, January 30th at noon Eastern time and bring your questions. The link to register is in the show notes. What is the state of employee well-being in your organization? Are you measuring it? And more importantly, what are you doing to address the concerns and to ensure what is working well continues to serve you well? I trust that you've taken away some useful insights and strategies that will help you in those efforts. Thanks so much for joining me today. I work with organizations to build better leaders and better workplaces. Let's work together to enhance yours and connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm always sharing resources and generating conversations about the topics we talk about on this podcast. I'd love to hear from you. If you're ready to elevate your leadership or would like to bring an inspiring message to your conference or corporate event, let's have a conversation. I'm here to help. That's it for today's episode. Thank you for tuning in and learning how to develop better leaders and better workplaces. We'll be back next month with Vivian for another episode. But until then, you can access some of Vivian's resources by visiting her website, VivianBlade.com. And remember, don't let the shift hit your plans.